Bumps and bruises, scratches and scrapes, some of the ingredients that a good life makes. But sorrows become success, and as we aim for the top, we will pause if we must, but we will never stop. Welcome to Sim Soul Sessions. Welcome to Simso Sessions. This is a safe space to share your stories. Tonight we talk to a guest who learned that being himself was the truest bet he could make. And despite the difficulties in making that bet, it's now paying off in purpose and peace of mind. Rowan Quite Perry is my guest tonight in our safe space. How are you? I am doing great. Clean as a whistle. Yeah, man. And smell very nice. Yeah, man, like because... a dance fitness school book. <laughs> I want to run smell of a joke. Mm -mm. We're not going to do that something there. It's going to be that kind yeah, of evening. Mm -hmm. I'm glad to have you. I am happy to be How here. How does it actually. feel to be sitting in the space? Um, It feels very safe. I don't know. But when I stepped into the studio, there was just an aura of, OK, all right. We're going to talk. We're going to talk. Yeah, so um, much credit to you. Love that for us. Thank you for that, Rohan. That's a, that's a real honor. Um, challenging journey for you. Yes. It has not been a bed of roses. Mm -hmm. um, but you made a bed for yourself now in which you're very comfortable. Mm -hmm. And it all started to fall in place when you made a decision that you were going to choose you. Correct. Which was a hard decision. Um, Took you a long time, too. Yeah. Um, it, it took me a time. So becoming quite Perry wasn't a plan that I had for myself, but it was ordained for me. But I had to, you know, make the step mm -hmm. to do it, which was a hard step, mm -hmm. you know, because being my age, this was nine years ago, you know, and having that level of awareness and the trust in God knowing that, okay, all right, fine, you know, um, this is something that you need to do for yourself, just go. And also, not knowing what's on the other side. Correct. Yeah. So we're going to talk through all of that. Mm -hmm. But um, a lot of people are struggling with self-identity. Who am I? Correct. Why am I here? Mm -hmm. And it's robbing them of their joy. Correct. And they look at you now in social and they see this wonderful life that you have and they don't realize that you had that struggle as well. Growing up, Correct. like it was bad yeah. for you. Um, bullying in, in school? Yes. Okay, so if we're going to go back to <laughs> my high school days, um, and I do believe it started in prep school, but I don't think I had the level of awareness and emotional intelligence to no one understand what that was. But as a child, you knew you were always different, you know, which in this society today, different is good. Unique is good. And I'm happy that we've gotten there. But yes. back then, you know, especially throughout high school, you know, I was chastised a lot. You know, I was bullied a lot for being me, for being articulate, for being expressive, for gesticulating. Why you loud so? Yeah. Why you mm -hmm. talk so? Why you, and yeah, all of those things, you know. Um, and it places you in a particular category, you know. And there was a lot of groupthink back then, mm -hmm. so you find that bullies came in twos, threes, fours. You know, at that age back then, it's whatever the crowd is going with. And Rowan's came in once. Yeah, Rowan's came. So it was came. always you against. Correct. Yeah. Um, don't get me wrong, you know, I was very witty, very outspoken, so of course I would defend myself if I felt the need to, but um, it was a lot, and I think that kind of sort of guided my decision making for a while. Mm -hmm. So I, as much as I would, you know, stick up for myself there, there was a period of my life where when people were coming at me, I wouldn't say anything. And so you decided to say something to your maker. 
Right. One day you and God had a real talk. We did. You um, were like, yo, mm -hmm. what is this? Right. Why did you make me this way? Correct. Why am I going through these things? Yes. I remember it very vividly. Um, I was in my room and um, I was crying, of course. And I questioned a lot of things about myself, which society, of course, made me question. And I just wanted to know why was I different from everybody else, you know? And I, self-harm was a thing back then, you know? Um, what does self-harm mean, Ron? So a lot of students at school used to slit their no, wrists. Cutting. Yeah, cutting. Um, I, I explored with it for a very short period, um, but in that period also, I wanted to kill myself. You know, and I remember vividly writing a letter to my mom and slipping it under her door. Um, and she read the letter, of course, but she just placed it back, you know, in my room. We never had a conversation about it. And that letter was? I don't understand, you know, why I am the way that I am and why people don't like me. So, you know. I we this. <laughs> okay, so what came out of your conversation with God? What did he say? Okay, so he and said... And then what came out of your conversation with mom? Okay, so with God in and of itself, it took me a while to get there. You know, there was still... I felt in the conversation that I had a purpose. You know, I didn't know what the direct purpose was. I just knew that there's a path that I've set out for you that you are going to accomplish, so just give me a little bit more time. Okay, so you, you got that sense after it wasn't a crying out and reaching correct. out. Correct, so it, okay. wasn't a, it, wasn't a clear, it wasn't a clear thing, but I've always been faith-based. Yes. So I felt it in my spirit that, yes. yeah, boy, something else is out there for me. Mm -hmm. um, in the conversation with my mom, which we never really had a conversation. You didn't talk about it? No. So she got the letter. Right. Radio silence? Yeah. So, but in my, in my 32 years now being <laughs> here, there's a lot of things that I do not place on my parents, only because I find that that generation wasn't necessarily equipped with dealing with a lot of the things that we went through. So clearly there's many avenues you can go down now in terms of mental health, um, talking about your emotions, therapy. You know, they weren't necessarily equipped. A lot of the things that we experienced back then was, well, yeah, Balfa, yes. you know, no, and that's what they grew no, up no, on. You understand? Well, yeah, stress ball. Exactly. Well, stress ball. You know, so yeah. everything, was, everything was pushed to the side. So I don't fault my parents. Yeah. I really don't. Yeah. I don't. Okay. I don't. Right. There were some other things that you would get to learn about your parents as time went on. Correct. And those two impacted your trajectory. So we talk uh, more with Rowan about that when we come back. So come. Welcome back, everybody. We're here with Rowan Perry. You do, I want to explore that point that we left on a little bit more because I have so many guests who sit in this chair mm -hmm. who've been through things when they were children, Correct. never got the support from their parents that they needed. Mm -hmm. Yes, we're in a different time, Rowan, but what say you to parents who have children who are clearly and obviously reaching out for some kind of support, mm -hmm. sometimes with uncomfortable topics, Correct. Some, sometimes the topics they themselves don't understand as parents. Instead of you know, saying, boy, what could you have as a problem at 12 and 13 and 14? Right. What are parents supposed to be telling their children? I believe that parents show up how they know how to, correct? But I think a lot of the problem in the persons who can't do it is the self-awareness. It's knowing that you are not equipped to mm -hmm. handle the situation um, because there are many other avenues that you could explore in terms of getting your child help, you know? Um, but right. I'm happy that we're here in a generation now where it is okay to do it. So it's not shun upon, it's not chastised, chastised and it's also not pushed to the side. And not you stigmatized. Know? But I think it's, I think it's coming, with, coming to grips with the acknowledgement that you cannot do it. Correct. You don't have the tools. Yeah. You don't have the tools. Or you also cannot do it alone, you know. So there are family members who I'm sure can assist or there are other agencies yes. <laughs> <laughs> that could facilitate help. So at 10... 
Mm -hmm. um, your parents separated. Yes, around, and, that, around that time period. Uh -huh. and, and you kind of realized that your dad wasn't there anymore. You never really knew what that meant until you knew what that meant. Correct. When you were older and you came to grips mm -hmm. with that. Um, what did that do to you as a young man? Because you said after that, you felt like it was your responsibility to take care of your family. Right. Self-imposed. Nobody told you that. Correct. Yeah, but you felt like it was your responsibility. That's heavy. So, yeah. Um, my siblings and I, um, we actually joke about this, um, but there was a time in which, you know, we moved. We moved quite a lot, to be honest, but our final move was a move where daddy was not there. Um, and I remember having a conversation with my mom in her room and, you know, she brought in the support of her best friend to just let us know that, hey guys, you know, daddy won't be around anymore. And it's a situation where we're all crying, but we don't know what we're crying for. We just know that this feels weird, you know, because at that age, you're used to a particular family dynamic and he won't be around. We don't know why, but we just know he won't be around. Granted, you know, we went and we spent time with him and, you know, until we eventually moved to Kingston and the entire dynamic just changed, right. you know. So the access and the availability to him was no longer there. So we just knew mommy now. Um, so as the eldest <laughs> boy <laughs> yes, yes. of the siblings, um, I don't know. I just, I felt as though nobody told me to. Um, it was never imposed on me. It was never, oh, you have to make the decisions now. I just felt as though, I felt that, you know, it might look different to a lot of people, um, i.e. my family members, my mm -hmm. siblings, my mom, they might have a different reality of the situation, but being in it and not necessarily having your father there immediately is like, okay, all right, then I have to know. Step in. Yeah. Yeah. And it became really heavy for you. Yes. Um, and as a young man whose content creation journey had started and, you know, you were looking even to entrepreneurship, you just got to a point where you were like, I cannot yeah. do this anymore. Um, your creativity started to wane. Mm -hmm. And you said, I had to take myself away. Correct. So I eventually took the step to move out. Um, no one knew that I was moving. Sorry? Yeah. <laughs> what? No one knew I was moving. So like you were there one day? And the I was next, there one day and then day I just said, there? hey, I, I'm leaving. And I feel like at the time that was the best decision for me. You know, being in the household, of course, we're all grown up now and we're all sharing the responsibilities of the house, you know, but there were many other things that were also left unsaid in that situation that I just felt like, what was best for me and the trajectory in which I, you know, was going and the places in which I wanted to go, mm -hmm. I felt as though this environment no longer served me. Mm -hmm. So in order to matriculate better into this whole new life that is, you know, rapidly happening, I have to now put myself in an environment where it's me and I have to take care of me in order for the creative juices to start flowing, in order to show up for work, you understand, I now have a responsibility to a fan base, you know, so I had to move out of that in order to get in a better space yeah. to further feed, you know, the quiet period that you see here today. And a fan base, but also at one point, several corporate clients, because many of us don't know that you ran a successful social media business for a, a profitable entity yes. for a long time. Forget Utech. Forget Utech. We went to Utech. It never worked. <laughs> <laughs> Did not work. Yes, we... <laughs> we were running our business and the business was doing well. And you said, Simone, I left the business too because I had to honor my unhappiness. Correct, yes. What does so, that mean, Rohan? So I did peri promotions for quite some time and I did social media for a number of events, um, a number of companies, also a number of stars that you see here today. But um, it no longer served me, you know, and I got to a point where I was, I was very unhappy, you How know. How did it not serve you? Um... I think mentally, 
I felt as though I was in a loop. And you know when you're, you, you know when you feel like you're on the brink of something and you just cannot get to the other side, you just keep stuck. And I was like, okay, this, this seems like there is a next chapter for me. I just need to be able to take the step to turn the page, mm -hmm. you know? So it no longer served me and everything happened. The story is just a very, I wouldn't even say serendipitous. It just, everything fell into place how it was supposed to because at the time in which I was experiencing this, all of my contracts were up for renewal. And it was just up to me to actually make the decision to say, hey, I'm no longer going to do this. And I credit um, a very prominent businessman who gave me an opportunity when I was a mere 20 something year old. And he said to me, he was like, but Ron, like we need you. Like, you know, you've left an impact, you know, in our business. And I, it was very hard for me to tell him no. Mm -hmm. That was probably one of the hardest ones because he really saw something in me and he gave me an opportunity and I was just like, no. And there was a very long period after telling everybody no that, you know, mom is like, what is going on? Grandma is like, what is going on? Every day I'm a dead woman just in my room, in my bed, lay down, very depressed, you know? And she's just like, Rowan, get up and go and look at work. But I knew that life was bigger than what I had already had for myself. Oh, I just, lava. okay. We're gonna explore that on the mm -hmm. other side of this. Woo! <laughs> wow, 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 on the cusp of what? We'll find out after this. We'll be right back. All right, so we're back with Rohan. Uh, the power of no is something that you discovered. It's a powerful, powerful thing yeah. to be able to tell people no, especially when it is that you are discovering what it is that you truly want for yourself. Correct. And so everybody at this point now is encouraging you, go find a job. Mm. Grandma is like, what's going on with you? Yeah, Mom is like, what's going on with you? Um, and you, you, you mentioned before the break depression mm -hmm. and anxiety, which is something you openly speak about um, in, your, in your public persona. You said you had hit a wall mm -hmm. and you were at a point where you realized that you had become a slave to your brand Correct. and it had worn you right to the ground. Yes. Too much access, mm -hmm. too much, too much of too much. Yeah. Talk to me about that. Okay, so being in the public space and in the public eye, um, there's no handbook for it. Um, there's no rules, you know, and this was something that just happened. I never planned for it, but I to wake up one day, do my little video, see pure followers are coming, <laughs> so I'm going to work with it. And then I remember the first day I was going through my comments and someone said to me, oh my God, I'm a fan of you. And that was the ultimate realization that, oh, wow, okay, something's happening here. You know, of course, after doing it for um, a number of years, I felt as though I had a responsibility to my audience. And... One thing about me is that I'm a very disciplined person and I'm also very committed. Mm -hmm. So if I start something, I'm going to finish it, you know? And you have persons now messages saying, oh my God, when is the next video? When is the next video? When is the next video? And you are so caught up in a cycle that you don't even know that you're in a cycle, you know? You're just doing it because you're, you're on this high. You know, life is great. You know, you have all these opportunities. You, have, you, you see these lovely messages every day and you're reaching and you're impacting lives, but not knowing that you're doing it to the detriment of your own self, you know? Can you imagine that? Yeah. Like, how can those two things, people watching are like, how can those two things even be true? Correct, yeah. But they can. Yes, they can. And it takes you a while to realize, but I'm happy it happened how it did. So I'm now thankful for the space that I'm in and the support that I have around me. So there was a point in which I could not go anymore. I was at home in my apartment and I, I, I couldn't go anymore. I was very demotivated, I felt very weak. Um, and before I knew it was anxiety, you, I was experiencing all these things. 
you know, which was very debilitating. Like? I was shaking a lot. Yeah. I had no appetite to, to eat. I also had like diarrhea, you know, um, the impulse to do nothing. I was just laying, you know, and, you know, I'd have my moments in which I would be crying, of course, but um, it took me a while to realize that I needed rest. Self-preservation yeah. at that point came into sharp focus for you. Yes. Because you were severely at this point anxious. Correct. And depressed. Mm -hmm. Did you know those were the words to name what you were feeling? How did you find that out? Um, it wasn't until after, after, after a particular time and in having conversations with a number of persons who have probably experienced the same. Um, and then I found my triggers. Mm. Yeah. So it was going out in public and literally feeling like I cannot interact with you. It got to the point where fans would come up to me and I, I couldn't interact. I never had it to give them. Empty. Yeah. Empty room. I was, I was feeling emotions that I was just like, whoa. You know, this isn't the bubbly quiet period where I said, wag one girl, want me, all right, everything good, sister, yeah, man. I couldn't. You know? And so what was that about? Because you say you got to a point where you realized that you had been sharing so much. Mm -hmm. um, when you go to the supermarket, when you go to the... Correct. That you had nothing for yourself anymore. Correct. So there are times in which you want to just show up and do what you're doing and go about your business. But you don't necessarily have that luxury when you're in the public eye, especially on the scale that I am. And one thing I learned about my audience and my community is they feel like they know me. Mm -hmm. They feel like we are friends. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so they would just come up to me, tap my palm, shoulder, warm up here, all right, everything good, right, blah, blah. and we would have the longest conversations, okay? I didn't mind, but it just got to a point where I was like, okay, I, I have to draw a line, I have to draw a boundary, Boundaries. I have to learn to say no, not feel bad about it, mm -hmm. and I also have to now take care of myself, mm -hmm. you know, in order to be able to show up for them in the way in which I want to show up for mm -hmm. them, mm -hmm. you know, and it's a small price to pay, but I know I'm in a position where I'm now equipped to now take care of myself to supply the people who what support me. What did you do? You disappeared? Um, what did yeah. the self-work look like to get to this place? Um, no was a very important thing. No was a very important place for me to get to. And I remember having a conversation with um, Yendi about this because that was something that she struggled with as well. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I remember saying that to her and she was like, wow, you know, and it's the not feeling bad about saying no. It's a complete full sentence. Yeah, because no explanation or I know who I am. You know, and I know who I am to people. There's no ill intent. But at some point, you have to choose yourself, you know. And in you asking me for a picture or in you feeling a little bit, you know, ruffled by your interaction, it's not my intent. But some days it's not going to be that day. And I'm sorry about it, but I, I just I don't have it to give. And I will never do myself that disservice again based off of the place in which I was at. So for, for folks who are watching who may have come to you on a day, right. said, Ron beg a picture. Yes. And, and, you, and you said, I can't do this today. Correct. Um, and they didn't understand in that moment. Mm -hmm. What do you want folks who are watching now to understand about the days when you just... Um, just to understand that there's a human side to this. I know you love me, and my love is not too, my love is not bad, 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 down to the, hello, the girl going to walk, and I love you guys. But I am now in a place where my happiness, my peace of mind is non-negotiable, you know? There are days in which my well, of course, is refilled, and of course, I have more balance now, and I'm now understanding that rest is also a form of productivity. Yes, sir. So I take those moments. So very seldom will you find me out on the road right now, and may I tell you no. <laughs> Because I'm now doing the work to take care of me. So important. Yeah. So important. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. More to share with Rowan after this.
All right, we're back, everybody, with uh, Rohan. What's the, who's the, what's the difference between Rohan and Quiet Perry? Okay, so <laughs> um, Quiet Perry is the more outgoing one, um, the more fun, the more jovial, the more expressive, the more witty, the jokes, all of that. Rohan, no, he's the one that is, you know, very subdued. Is that you? Is this that is, Rohan this today? Is, you're talking to Rohan today. <laughs> okay. Yeah, man. The articulate one, the very verbose one, the one that will, you know, literally let you know about yourself oh. very eloquently. Oh. Yeah, man. Okay. That is Rowan. All right. You know? I'll be sure not to have you tell me about myself today. <laughs> the journey that you've been on has taught you um, about the importance of mentorship. Right. In your life. Mm -hmm. And the difference it could have made right. uh, back then. Correct. Um, you speak of two pivotal persons in your life, in Dexter Pottinger right. and Karen Clark. Correct. Who taught you to speak up for yourself. Correct. When you're going through stuff. You said one time you went to Karen complaining about how people were talking about you and talking at you. Oh, my God. And Karen said, why, why are you telling me this? Why are you telling me like, this? Find <laughs> your voice. Yeah. And yeah. now she cannot stop me. And no, <laughs> she cannot stop you. No, she cannot stop me. But I do, um, I do attribute a lot of who I am to both of those persons. Um, Dexter really taught me about representation in relation to how you, how would you like yourself to be represented? You know, how do you want to show up to the world? Mm -hmm. You know, he was very key on giving me advice in that you know and not only like verbal advice just environmental advice being around him and saw how he moved and just his dedication to work his excellence to discipline. work his discipline to work you could call this man any hour of the day and he would always answer his phone ready and rearing to go to go to work you understand and i feel like subconsciously i developed that, you know, that drive to just want to work, you know, and Karen Clark, <laughs> she has been the driving force for a lot of the decisions that I've made because I've, I've seen her mm -hmm. and I know her story and I know what she's been through and I've, I've always wanted to emulate that level of excellence. Yeah. Yeah. But also you now want to be that person who is there for the young people who cannot find their way. Correct. And because so, yeah. I feel like I, I feel like mentorship is important because had I had not had I not had those people in my life, I would have probably been on a more different path. Um, I feel as though they steered me in that direction, not verbally telling me, do right, do right. But it's through the respect that I had for them that I never wanted to disappoint them. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I feel like a lot of our generation don't have people that they respect. They have nobody to look to to say, why, if I was supposed to ever do this, so-and-so would look at me like, what are you doing? You know what I'm saying? So I feel like being that not outright coming out and saying, okay, my wife respect me, but I do it through action, mm -hmm. how I choose to move, mm -hmm. how I go about my daily life, how I go about work. You know, I want you to look to me and say, boy, really and truly, like, you inspire me for the such, mm -hmm. and, you know, just seeing you is even more encouraging me to put myself in a position to get to where you are. And it's not necessarily even about having somebody say, do right, do right. Correct. But it's important to have somebody who's telling you it's okay to do you. Correct. Do you. That's also that's very important. that's what your school tour is doing. So now you're manifesting something right. that is giving you this level of impact mm -hmm. and reach that you dreamt about. Correct. Now feels so soul filling for you. Yes. Um, I've always said I wanted to live a purpose, you know, for like, like a driven life. I want to know that when I leave this earth, I left an impact. So persons can say that Rowan Perry did this, you know? So through my work, through uplifting people, through making people laugh, but also literally going into the schools and saying, hey, y'all need to be very careful about what y'all are posting online, okay? It's better to tell them, right? It's better to tell them yeah. that someone who actually lives that life. Yeah. And it's not me telling you I actually do it, you know? So being nine years in the game, you've never seen me go 
back and forth with people online. You don't see me in the comments. I'm very responsible in how I maneuver through the social space. And it's not because I'm intent on doing that. That's literally innately me. Right. I don't have that. I'm not equipped with that. That's not me as a person. I'm not going to take part in those things. But also, you're at a point in your journey now where you'd have learned so much. Correct. And you say nothing phases you. It ain't no, it's all like water off your back now. Right now, yes. Because yes. you're so chill, you said. Yes, very chill. Um, but I also, I also believe that being in the social space, actually, I think high school, right? So follow me. Um, I think high school built that extra layer of, okay, whatever it is you want to say about me, I do not care. I went through it, and I was at my lowest of lows to the point in which, you know, I wanted to off myself. And God said that there's a purpose. So whatever you have to say about me, it will never exceed. It will never exceed the purpose that I'm here to fulfill. Which is what? Which is changing lives, impacting lives, reaching people. You know, there's, there's a, there are many people who have literally messaged me in the hospital and sometimes I myself don't even understand my own reach and my own impact to the point where people are like, I re-watch your videos so often. So sometimes you're doing the work and you do not know. Sometimes you really do not know. And it might not be the reality for a lot of people who don't support you, but it is a reality for a lot of people. Yeah. Okay. Well, here are some of the people whose lives you've touched. Go ahead, Laura. Hey Rohan, you are so special to me and you should know how important you are. You have been my best friend for over a decade. To many you're Rohan, but to me you're my Perry. I thank you for including me in every and anything you got going on. I'm always learning from you. We have created so many memories together. We have so many life experiences together. You are a trendsetter, a go-getter, a hustler. You are hilarious. You are such an inspiration to this world. You are a great role model to those around you. And I thank you for just being a great friend. Cheers to you for all your accomplishments. Keep being the true authentic person that you are. Keep inspiring and I want you to know that you are very important to me. You are valued, you are loved. And keep being you, Rohan. You are just such a light to this world and I really love and appreciate you. You have accomplished so much already and I can't wait to see what you do next. Cheers to you, Rohan. Up, up. I'm checking in to say hello and let you know that we're watching. I see you. I'm excited for all your successes there in Jamaica and I'm looking forward to future endeavors here and across the globe. I know that your impact there will be felt uh, here as well and that we'll be able to work on some new opportunities for you. And so uh, just sending my love uh, and just uh, acknowledging also your immense talent and uh, along with your phenomenal heart. So have a great time today and I'm looking forward to seeing you soon. All right, take care. My heart is full, full of pride and full of joy of what you have done, what you continue to do. And as they always say, the best is yet to come. Once there's a belief in a higher God and we continue to pray and believe in him, the rest falls right into place. When I think about your pet project, what will you post and the impact it is having on the younger generation, that in itself is priceless. Continue to shine, continue to soar and always know at Casa de Creek, there is a room just for you. Love you, my nephew. I just wanted to come here and let you know how immensely proud I am of you and of your accomplishments. It's been great watching your journey and just seeing your growth and the strides that you've made. What I love most about you is that you know what you want and go after it. And not only are you hilarious, you make me laugh and you also spread joy to those in Jamaica and other parts of the world. I just want you to continue being a light, continue being an inspiration to others and those who are looking to come up and excel in the social media space. Keep pushing and keep walking your purpose and your destiny. What is feel can't unfeel. And most importantly, continue to keep God over. And I'm looking forward to seeing all the amazing things that you have planned for this future. Keep up the good work, bro, and I love you. 
I think I'm reminded daily of the impact that you have because a day doesn't go by where somebody else doesn't come up to me just to let me know how much they love you. Even today, as I'm recording this video, somebody came up to me at work just because she had to let me know how much she loves you and she loves your videos. And I think that's just an indication that you're doing exactly what you're meant to be doing. I'm so proud of you. I can't wait to see what lies ahead. All the best and I love you. So anybody who knows me knows that you are one of my absolute favorite persons. We have cried together, we have laughed together, and we have shared some of my most fond memories together. I was really blessed the day that I met you and I've always told you that I really appreciate and thank you for bringing me on this journey called Life With You. It has been an unforgettable experience. It is nothing that I would change. And even through our darkest times, you have always been a light to me because I've always replayed all the words of encouragement that you've given to me, all the life lessons that you bestowed upon me. And I just want to tell you thank you so much for choosing me as a friend and for always ensuring that I keep in check and in line in the most rohanist way possible. I love you and that will never change. Bye. I can't start to tell you how much I am very, 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 very proud of you, my son. I have one reservation, however, because as time went on, I gradually lost my identity. So then I became Quiet Perry's father, and I am not myself anymore. However, it, it tells me the kind of impact you have had, not only locally, but apparently internationally, and that speaks volumes. And I want to tell you again, and I've told you before, that I'm extremely proud of you. Keep up the good work, my son, and looking forward to greater and bigger things in the years to come. Hi, son. My heart is filled with immense pride and joy for the man that you have become. Congratulations on your well-deserved achievements. Hard work and determination pays off. Rohan, I want you to remember to take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Keep yourself grounded. Be happy. Have fun. Believe in yourself as I believe in you. All the best and I love you. thought you'd have gotten me like that. Can I get another wow though? Because <laughs> somebody else's horror is a wow. Can I get another don't stand on that much or say You're joking. <laughs> you are joking. You better go give her a hug. Miss Baby get up please. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> It's free to air TV. Careful what you say. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, we can't I'm, say hell. It's not a problem. I'm sorry. This Miss is Miss Sway, babe, whose mic is now. Your mic is now on Miss Sway, babe. Here comes TV. You better come around. Show us what you've learned. Oh, my God. I am so sorry about hooking so you So this is, it's okay. There you, there you go. go. Come, yeah, Miss Sway. Have a seat. Tell us who Miss Sway, is, if you can close your mouth long enough. Okay. <laughs> She's the principal. <laughs> of the elite preparatory, <laughs> the prep school I went to when I was living in mm. West Milan. Mm. What, so what is going she, on? Has she impacted your life? Um, you played a big role. Yes, um, in my preteen years. Um, there are many memories that we have, Miss Swayze. Sure. Yeah, man. Should we talk about the pink belt? Oh, don't. <laughs> <laughs> don't you go there. Oh my God! How, how how has he grown? How has he matured? How proud are you of him? Wow! I remain speechless. Rohan, incredible. 
As my student, he was simply fabulous. Let me tell you, he has made me feel so proud. Every teacher wants their student to do well and to become successful. Rohan is one of those students. Did you know he was going through the turmoil he was going through when he was going through it? Not really, because you see, Rohan has always been this kind of person for mm. me. Mm -hmm. And so I kept that kind of a, a image of him. But I can tell you, I am not surprised the journey he has taken and where he has reached. The achievements he has had it was written in the stars, sure. So what do you want to say to him today before we go to break? Look at your face. Rohan, I just want you to know that I'm so awfully proud of you, extraordinarily so. And I just want to know you to know that you have impacted my life, even mm -hmm. as a student. You did. There were moments as a teacher when I was down, but because of who you are now and who you were then, some of my days were made lighter. Oh, God. And I just want to say to you, thank you, Rohan. And thank you for making my dreams come true. Because <laughs> I really love when my students are successful and you are that. I just want you to know that God is with you. Mm -hmm. And I know you love God. You have always done that, been there. And I want you to know to keep God foremost. Your successes are numerous. You, your name is far and wide now. But I just want you to know that God has been with you. And I cannot say anymore how proud I am of you. Um, you need a moment. So I cannot. This is. Take the break. Thank you, Mr. Surgery. God bless you. Sit with us. Thank you. We'll be right back, everybody. <laughs> to you, <laughs> How? Oh my God. Wow. I never expected this one. This is wow. Wow. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not easily surprised. Well, this one was a <laughs> man. That was a little mistake. Welcome back, everybody. We're leading the show with, with Rohan quite Pare. And I'm going back, so let's make a loop, to your discussion with God mm -hmm. about why he made you this way. Correct. And the epiphany that the way he made you is just perfect. Correct. And that the very reason that many people do not like you is the very reason that a horde of others will. Correct. Yeah. Imagine that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it took me a while to get there, but I guess with, you know, the outpour of love and support from just people you don't even know, um, because they don't have to, it makes you now realize and it cements in you that you are perfect just the way you are. And on, on all of my social medias, there is three words at the top, my Facebook, my Instagram, everywhere. It says, just be yourself. And I tattooed it right here. Did you? Yeah. And yeah. Because yourself is good enough. Correct. Yeah. And in a world where everybody is trying to be somebody else, trust me, it will pay off greatly by just showing up as who you are. And so if you had the journey to do it all over again? Would I have done it differently? Mm -hmm. No. Because no I now would not, I, would, I now wouldn't have the lessons that I've learned, you know? There was, there's no perspective in not going through that. I now have perspective, which has now guided me, you know, to make the decisions that I make today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so a lot of young people mm -hmm. watch this show. A lot of older folks watch this show. A lot of the young people and a lot of older people are struggling with self-identity, you know. Correct. Because they want validation and 
right. people to like them, and, mm -hmm. and they're sitting here watching you today, and they're like, whoa, yeah. I don't have to be anybody I'm not. Correct. What is your word to those people? And that is something that I actually take pride on, you know, because you are enough, you know, and the most important thing about that is you get to determine that enough. You don't have to measure that enough by someone else is enough, you know, and I think that's where a lot of people lose themselves. They're measuring up to other people, competing and comparing, you understand? But you are enough and you are who you are and you are perfect just the way you are. You don't have to change anything about you. You don't have to show up because this person is like that and you're trying to fit in. You are just enough. You are just enough and take pride in the people who are there for you. And on the days, do you still have days when you don't feel like enough? On the days when you feel down and what do you do to? Um, I haven't had one of those moments oh, in a very, wow. yeah. That's so good. Yeah, I haven't had, I was, I'm very, I'm very intentional about taking care of myself and I know what it feels like to go back there. Clearly everybody has off days, but it's not a day in which I'm down in the mud and I'm like, oh my God, yeah. you know, I'm exercising a lot of balance in my life and intention is a very important thing and the more you're intentional about things in your life is the more it becomes normal for you you know so this is a new level unlocked yeah you most, most definitely worlds. if them did have that quiet period back in the high school oh god nobody could have chat to me <laughs> oh god but that dangerous <laughs> but that dangerous <laughs> Something tells me you're dangerous now. <laughs> Look world, a new and improved version of Rohan Perry is coming and we are all here for it. I'm so proud of you. You know, those words are just, you know, I don't know why those words shake me so much, but I'm proud of you is, uh, it gets me every single time. I feel like because innately I know the journey mm -hmm. and I know what I had to go through. Mm -hmm. Um, but I also know that it's not my story. It was a part of my story. But those words, honestly, I'm Are proud you of you. proud of you? I am very proud of me. Very. Yeah. You know, to have in this society today, to stand up by your two foot and do what I do and is still doing, that's no small feat. Good for you. People wicked, man, them evil, them terrible. Them dangerous, especially on social media, them in yam yam. But, man, nah look. Nah look. Nah them. look. Nah look. No, you not look like in. triangle your e thing. Man, nah ask ya. Yeah. Everything. <laughs> okay. Everything. Because if me, if me did um, follow them, but I did for hungry. And we're not doing that. And we're not doing that. Who is there to eat? Are you crazy? We must eat. Oh my God. That's what I tell you. <laughs> Affirmation time. Let's, let's lead the show uh, with Rohan. Gosh, guys, it can be quite difficult to figure out life, especially when you're trying to figure out who you are and your place within the larger construct, what you love, who likes and loves you, why they do or why they don't. Validation from others is so important for many of us in determining our value, but the truth is that their validation is worth nothing if we love not ourselves. It is that self-love that is our real currency where the real value lies. And without it, we are worth less, for we can do nothing that adds value to who we are or why we're here. So take the time to figure out your life, who you truly are, why you are here, and most importantly, allow your gut to guide you. Honor your unhappiness. And in that space, give yourself the chance to make some tough decisions that will ultimately pay off and make your life really, really rich. Tonight we are affirming, I won't use others' validation to calculate my value. That is our soul food and our show for this evening. Thank you very much for watching everybody. We are back next week with another story of the power of the human spirit. Until then, every blessing and please remember to count your blessings.